Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This video is going to help in two areas. First of all, it's going to help you write a TI Inspire program, which will make it make you more able to program other things in your own calculator. So whether or not you're interested in the subject I'm covering, if you have a TI Inspire, this will show you how you can harness it for greatness. Secondly, we're going to go ahead and show how to program that to solve the stress for the stress intensity modification factor beta when we're doing fracture mechanics for one type of crack. Let's take a look at how it works. Let's start by taking a look at what we're talking about here. We're talking about damage tolerance analysis where we're actually evaluating the life, the fatigue life of something by evaluating how that crack grows over time. And one of the things you need to know is you need to be able to use the stress intensity uh, to calculate the stress intensity, which is given by this equation. You can watch my video on how that's done. And one of the pieces for analyzing that is our beta which one typical beta for a uh, centerline crack. So the beta is the stress intensity modification factor in this equation for the stress intensity. And if we have a central crack, the crack length is defined like this, and we get a curve like this, and you can actually solve precisely using the, the equation that you can see on the graph for beta. Now there's a little bit of an ugly equation and students and industry professionals, you know, when we type an equation this long with stuff, especially when there's a secant in there, we tend to make mistakes and we have to calculate two or three times and often we fumble around while we're trying to figure out what the secant is and if we haven't been working in trig for a while, we tend to get a little rusty in that. So programming your calculator to do this for you, if you encounter this very often, both makes you a stronger programmer and ensures you don't make a mistake because you can then test out your program on a number of problems to make sure that it's robust and will always give you the correct answer and that will really help you to become a better analyst. So we're going to start by creating a program that will do, that will evaluate the beta for this central crack of a typical rod or something. Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a document. We're going to give it a general name like DTA for damage tolerance analysis. Then what we will do is we'll create a place, a tab where we can work and we will create our program in a separate tab. And we can always add as we're growing in our knowledge of damage tolerance, we can add new tabs with new functions so that they all work together from our calculating sheet. So we're going to start by picking document and we're going to pick a new document. We're going to make the first page a calculator. Now with this first page, all this does is this gives us a place to work just like the scratch pad. But it's convenient to have that here at the start of everything we're going to do so that we can do all of our work here and access all the programs that we make in this document. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a page, which means we're going to come down here and insert a new page just like that. And this page is going to be the program editor, and we're going to create a new program on that page. We will name it uh, beta, and we will give it the figure number that this beta is from. The beta is from our Aerospace Strength Handbook. That is a, the excerpt that I showed you. It also is available in other references. And we're going to call it beta 431, named after the figure that we're emulating from volume two of the Aerospace Strength Handbook. You notice we now have two tabs. The first tab is our scratch tab and the second tab is our program, okay? We now can start to uh, report, uh, to create our program. Now, this is, this is labeled by the figure number. So student, a student or industry professional using the Aerospace Strength Handbook will open it up when they're doing analysis. They'll find that they want the central crack and they will say, oh, I'm doing figure 431. And then they will type it in. But to confirm that we've got the right one, it's good to report back what, what program we're in. So let's just go ahead and display space, 
And then we will say uh, the program name. So we're going to say, uh, which clicked on, uh, we clicked on this little button here, and we're going to call this uh, central crack. All right, this will remind us that we have a central crack that we're dealing with. Now, when we're doing this crack, if you look at the curve, we need to input the A over B ratio. We're going to go ahead and have the user supply that. So we're going to go up here to in the parentheses and put A over OB. That means, that means A divided by B, the crack parameter divided by the width of the part. And this means when a person runs this program, they're going to put that information in here. And then that is what the program will use. So first, the program is going to tell the user that it's evaluating a central crack. So they make sure they're running the right program. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to report back what uh, what we're using. And let's say AOB equals, and then we will put in comma AOB, and this should report back what it's using. Let's go ahead and we'll hit control B to save our program. Let's go over to the first tab and run our program. It was called B431. And let's say that our A over B is 0.05. Let's say we've already calculated that. And that says, okay, this is how the program runs. It runs a central crack. It's telling us that what we've just input is an AOB, A over B, of 0.05. Great. Our program is working. This is actually a very useful tool for running programs. Whenever you create a program, uh, whether it's in MATLAB or TI Inspire or Fortran or Python, it's very wise to put a lot of comments and have them repeated back to you to tell you, remind yourself what you're doing, and also to only write a, a line or two of code and then run the code. A line or two of code and run the code. It makes it much easier to debug. It's easier to write a program than it is to debug a very big program. And by keeping that small, if you only, if you run it every couple lines, you will then know if you have a problem that it's probably one of the last lines you just created instead of maybe one of a bunch of lines which may be intertwined in their logic. So, so far our program is working. Let's go back over here to 1.2 and the next step is to do our calculation. So we're going to go ahead and create a new line and we're going to put in the equation. Now if you look at the figure 4.3.1 of the handbook, it's got the equation written on there. And just remember, you can break this up. We're going to call this B equals, and actually the uppercase, lowercase won't matter to the TI Inspire. And in parentheses, we're going to put 1 minus 0 0.1 times, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to put in A over B. So A over B, that term, and actually that is squared. So we're going to hit our little squared button on the calculator. Then our next term is plus 0 0.96 times AOB. And now we're going to go up to a fourth power and then close our parentheses. We're going to go outside the parentheses and we're going to multiply by. And now we're going to take the square roots. So that's going to be a control squared, which gives us the square root, and we're going to type in the secant. You can also just grab the function for that. Open parentheses, and now we're going to hit our pi key, and then we're going to have uh, times AOB. That is the formula. Mm, we check the formula, double check all the terms. We've got 1 minus 0.1 times AOB squared plus 0.96 times AOB to the fourth. All that quantity times a secant of pi times A over B. That looks pretty good. That should do the trick. Now let's go ahead and display that back to the user so they can see uh, what this is. Let's go ahead and put in parentheses. B equals or beta equals uh, beta equals and then we'll put a comma 
and we'll put our B here. And actually, you'll notice I have different cases, but the TI Inspire doesn't see the difference between those. And you see it changed in both the lower case. I think we basically have our program here. Let's go ahead and see how it runs. Let's go back over here. And actually, we can retype this command, or we can just click on our earlier command by going uh, using this up arrow key to there and hit Enter. And that will rerun it. We're using the same A over B. And there it is. Uh, let's see. What did we do? It looks like beta equals B. It looks like we didn't succeed. So let's go back here. Well, if we look at our program, we notice we use B equals instead of the using this define button. So we're hitting control equals. That actually is the define function. That was our mistake. This is why this didn't work. So now that we've corrected that, it should work. Let's go ahead and compile that switch windows and we will try it again we can use our up arrow to just toggle up to our program and hit enter and now we see central crack a over b is this that's our beta so that's how we can program this equation to get the stress intensity modification factor for a central crack <laughs> Hope you found this useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe, leave some comments. Enjoy.